Hey everyone, Jess here and it's Friday, which means another Feature Friday pattern. This week we've got the Melody Dolman, which is a woven button-up dolman top that you can wear buttoned up or tied, or if you want to be a rebel, leave the buttons off and just wear it tied. Apparently that's all the rage according to my daughters, but I don't know anything about that. But what I do know is how to make adjustments using a projector when you're cutting out all your fabulous sewing projects. So that I have to share with you today, and I use that for my top here, along with some things for my daughter. So let's get started with all of that. All right, so we're going to start off with PDF Stitcher. If you don't have PDF Stitcher and you're using a projector to cut out your sewing patterns, I highly, highly, highly recommend downloading PDF Stitcher. It's absolutely free. It was actually developed by one of the members of the Projectors for Sewing group and is very useful in so many ways. But today we're just going to be focusing on how we use it to make adjustments to our patterns for personal preferences or because a pattern might not be usable right out of the gate. And there's many different reasons why you might want to use it. Uh, Love Notions has fabulous projector patterns as is, but they're just some things that I have preferences on that I would like to change just to make my cutting go a little more smoothly. So first thing we're going to do is open up the original projector pattern or A0 if that's what you have available. Uh, we're going to get that opened up and let's see, let me find it on my computer here. All right. And then we're going to save that as I'm just going to change some of the words to have my name just to make it personal for me so that I can find it later since I am altering this for me. All right, so after we got that all set, we're going to move over to the next tab and I'm going to add margins. Margins are fabulous because they give you more room to work. So if a pattern is uh, on A0 especially, there's not a lot of room to move things around and I like being able to move the pattern where I want it. So I always add a, a margin of 20 just so that I can move things around and have things in the middle of my mat where it's most accurate to cut. And then going over here, we're going to clean up the pattern a little bit so that I don't have so many sizes on the screen at one time. So we're just going to deselect all of these because I only need two sizes. I use 4X and 5X for most of my Love Notions patterns. So uh, I don't need all the other sizes there and they're just going to muddle my screen. So we're going to turn off all of those other sizes. And then I like to make the lines different colors and also thicken them up. Just again, for personal preference so that I can see things more easily so that when I'm cutting, I can make the cleanest cuts possible. So I'm gonna go over here. Uh, black rarely is the best color for me to use. Um, so let's see, we'll start off with size 5X. We're gonna change that to green. Green shows up fabulously on everything. I think it's like the easiest color for your eyes to see. So that's probably why it works so well. And then I'm going to thicken the lines up to four because that makes it nice and thick for me to cut. All right. And then apply to check. So now it says that that 5X is green. Now we're going to do the same thing with 4X, but we're going to make that a super fun, bright pink. And we're going to leave the line thickness as it is. Apply to check. This way we've got both of our sizes in two different colors. And then we got to recheck the tile titles tab or box so that we have all of our labels. Otherwise it won't work. Uh, it'll be hard to tell what's what. All right. And then we generate, oh, oh pretend that says that everything generated a-okay. It says that it's wrong because I have it opened up in Adobe already um, because I've already done this. But uh, yeah, just pretend that everything went smoothly. And now we can go over to Adobe and get our pattern cutting. All right, now over in Adobe, you're going to see we have a lot less lines to work with, but I want to make sure I cut the right pieces out. So I'm going to do some things to make sure I don't cut incorrectly. I'm going to go over to this comment tab on Adobe, and this is going to give me several different options for marking patterns. I can highlight the titles of the pieces uh, so that I'm sure to cut the right ones. comes in very handy if you need to cut standard bust versus full bust, um, or if you're cutting yoga versus um, 
a straight leg on like the revolution bottoms, stuff like that. So very handy to be able to do that. You can also pull up a text tool and then you can write uh, notes on your pattern pieces that you want to remember. Like sometimes it's hard to read the text because it's very small. So you can type in a larger font. Uh, I need two of this piece or um, I don't need, you know, the interfacing piece of this one, whatever it may be. So that's very helpful when you're trying to cut. And where is my full bust piece? I was going <laughs> to, oh, there it is. It was all the way at the top. Um, sometimes I do this. I just put a big X through things that I don't need because when I'm scrolling around, just trying to cut all the pieces out, sometimes I forget like what I'm supposed to be cutting. And all too often I've cut the wrong bust piece because I forgot to make a mark or a notation before I started and I just cut the first bust piece I saw and then it was incorrect. So that's helpful too. And then on here, this is my daughter's classic tee that uh, she wants as a tunic length dress. Or I guess that's a, not really accurate. She wants it as a tunic length top, but I'm going to make it into a dress so it lasts a little bit longer. Um, I was just going to use size 16 but I didn't like how it was layered for that. So I'm just gonna lengthen it the old fashioned way. This is how I do it at least. Uh, using the measuring tool, I just pull that up. And then I always start at the armpits because that is going to be the same on the front and the back. If you measure starting at the neckline, you might get an inaccurate measurement. You can use the shoulder, but I just find it's easiest just to mark it from the armpit point since I know those side seams are gonna match up. And then for her, I wanna make this 24 inches from the armpit to the finished length. So I'm just drawing a line here. This is so when I go to cut, um, I know where to start cutting and then I'm gonna bump up my pieces as I cut. And you'll see what I mean by that when I get to um, cutting out my dolman top, my Melody dolman. So, Right here, I'm just adding the lines. This is just gonna be a visual reminder to me when I go to cut where I need to add that length. And that's basically it for that. Now, when you're making adjustments using your projector, there's really three different ways you can do it. You can do it on the fly, which is my favorite way and the way that I usually do it and what I just demonstrated, but we'll get into that more in a second. You can also do it by tracing your pattern pieces on to paper and then doing your adjustments to the paper and then cutting those out. So that's a little bit more traditional uh, as far as using paper patterns versus a projector, but you don't have to assemble a million pieces of paper to get your pattern. You can just start projecting. So like this is a sleeve piece that uh, goes to the classic tee for the girls, the girls classic tee. And I'm just tracing it onto a piece of paper that I tape together so that I can make one big sleeve. And then if I wanted to do say a bicep adjustment, I could make it bigger, I could make it smaller, uh, but it's a lot easier to do on paper for something like this than it would be to do it just on the fly. You can do it on the fly, but the results are not going to be as consistent. So there are some adjustments that I will break out some paper for and do it the proper way. Um, so like this would be just like a simple no frills but bicep adjustment. I'm just adding some cuts all the way up to the arm sleeve cap, and then I can spread it out. Um, and of course, you can always squish it back together if you need to make your bicep smaller. But this would be great for also for full bust adjustments or small bust adjustments where you just need to adjust one part of the pattern. Uh, but there, this can be used for pretty much any part of your uh, pattern adjustments. I just happen to use it mostly for things that are just too dirty to cut, you know, the quick and dirty way. Um, so yes, the quick and dirty way, that's the second way you can do adjustments using your projector. So you can cut it out on paper or you can uh, do it quick and dirty or on the fly, as they like to say, you know, they being other people who use projectors. Um, there is a third way and that's doing it digitally. 
but that requires a whole separate set of skills that I am not willing to learn to possess in order to do it. Uh, it is very handy if you are very good in illustrator or affinity designer or other programs like that, but it's just, it, it really is a lot uh, for the average user to do, especially if you're just starting out and you're not a graphic designer. Um, so I usually recommend doing it the quick and dirty way, or you can project onto paper. So I'm going to demonstrate how did how I cut out my patterns the quick and dirty way or on the fly. I, I'll, I'll try to say on the fly from now on for you all. But um, here's my fabric for my Melody Dolman. It is a rayon crepe, I believe. I'm not sure where I got it, but um, I swear it did not look this wrinkled when I was laying it out to cut. Um, but uh, the shadows of the lighting and really highlights what's going on here. So uh, right now I'm just trying to make sure my grain line is straight, uh, as straight as I can make it with this fabric. And I'm going to cut out both pieces at the same time so that my adjustments are the same on both sides. Because this is the front bodice piece and you want to cut two. You need to cut a right side and a left side. Uh, so we are going to cut this. and. I'm going to start at the top. At the top, I cut a 4X because my bust and upper bust is smaller than my waist and my hips. And I usually I add length to tops also, but since this is going to be a tie top, then I'm not going to bother adding length. So I'll just cut at the lower length line for the size. So let's get the shoulder cut. Let me cut the neckline. And we're just doing our... Um, What's the word? Well, I guess it doesn't have a fancy word, but these are standard cuts. These aren't gradable cuts. Like I don't have to grade these because they are the same on most sizes or there's such a small variation that I don't bother. But the main difference is going to be on the side seam of, um, of the arm, like under the arm. That's where you're going to grade from your bust size to your waist and hip size. Uh, but oh, I have a small problem, and that is <laughs> my pattern is too big for my projected area, so I'm going to have to shift it down. This is something that you have to do often if you don't have a very large throw area, like if you um, can only project, you know, a small projection size. Then you're going to find that some of your patterns, especially larger patterns like maxi dresses and pants. Sometimes those need to be adjusted and moved. And you can add lines using PDF Stitcher, not a PDF Stitcher, using Adobe, uh, like I did before I added lines um, to either mark things that I wanted to cut out or not cut out, or just uh, using the measuring tool in order to mark things so that you have a, like a visual guide. But usually what I do is I just cut out what I can and then line those up. I shift everything down, line up what I've cut out already and try to get the fabric as smooth as I can um, and flat as I can again. So, you know, hopefully it didn't, I mean, it's a woven, so this didn't stretch much, but um, if you have a knit, you want to make sure it doesn't stretch too much when you do this. And now I'm just cutting the grading. So I just went from the uh, 5X line at the hemline up to the 4x of the sleeve and my uh i was i was sewing with sequins last week so my serger or my serger blade, my rotary cutter blade is a little dull and i need to change it so my cuts are not as clean as they could be but yep there's uh there's my bodice pieces looking oh so wrinkled <laughs> oh and even the back is wrinkled but it's okay it's okay i did give it a good press when I was sewing it and afterwards, and it looks much nicer and now that it's nicely pressed. So here's our back bodice piece. I'm just going to cut it the same way as I did the front bodice pieces. This one is cut on the fold, but I'm going to cut the 4X line at the top to give me my bust at the correct size and then the 5X at the bottom and then connecting those on the side. You do want to try to mimic the way you grade in uh, when you go from that 5X to the 4X, you want to try to make that as smooth as possible compared to the front 
so that when you're sewing it together, you don't have a large disparity. It's rarely an issue. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a time when it became like a big problem, but I do notice it sometimes when I'm sewing, like, oh, I didn't grade that as cleanly as I did the first piece. And now this here is just, we're just going to cut out the rest of our pieces uh, out of the scraps. Now I could have done a better job playing fabric Tetris using my projector here, but um, I was, I was not thinking very clearly and I had a hard time finding enough pieces, the right size and width for um, the collar pieces for the Melody Dolman top. And it took a little finagling, but I did eventually get the pieces that I needed to and everything, everything worked out, but it was a little stressful there. I'm like, are you serious? I'm going to have to find a coordinating fabric for the rest of this. Also, I feel like I need to point out the angle on my, on the screen here is a little skewed because I had a heck of a time getting my camera to stay level while I was recording. So it's a little wonky, but you know, you can still, you get the gist of it, right? Right. Hopefully. All right. And this is just for the um, cuffs for the sleeves. See how like little fabric I have left. Oh, and I should have brought out my ruler a long time ago. By the way, those uh, bathroom grips make fantastic handles for your ruler. If you don't have them, highly recommend. Okay. Now kids patterns, I feel like are a little bit more forgiving when you are cutting them out because you can use two different sizes to cut instead of adding length, removing length, whatever. So like for my daughter here, she wanted some leggings to wear with her tunic that I had mentioned I was cutting out before and we'll, we'll cut that out too. Um, but this is her two sizes. So she is a 10 wide and an eight tall something like that. <laughs> uh, what, what her waist is, is a little bit bigger than her height, according to the size chart. So all I'm doing is on the top and bottom of the pattern. So at the waist and at the hem, I am cutting her length. Okay. And then for the side seams, I'm cutting her width size. So, um, the green line is the width. I believe that's the size 10. And then the red line, actually it's pink, but it looks red here or orange. I don't know. Um, that is her height line. So I'm just following the, the side seam lines are getting her width and the top and bottom is getting her height. I hope that makes sense. I know it's kind of confusing to explain uh, it took like, it takes me a minute to like get wrap my mind, my mind, blah, 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 wrap my mind around it, but it works. And you'll see her pictures like, you know, like, Oh, there we go. We've got the proper width and the proper length. And I didn't have to like math any, like adding like removing length or anything like that. All right. I just wanted to show a few more examples of grading between sizes on the fly because I didn't want to cut out like a million projects that I wasn't planning on getting to. I'm just doing these on paper. So I have three different sizes on here. They are supposed to represent small, medium, and large, but since this is shrunk down, those lines were really hard to tell. So it's actually a much larger range of sizes, but we're going to call them small, medium, and large. Since we're calling paper fabric, we're going to call the, the line small, medium, and large. So uh, for this one, I'm going to say I want a let's see we'll cut the large waist and a small rise and then we're gonna say our thighs are somewhere in between a small and large so we want to cut a medium leg uh now when you're cutting the leg sometimes you need the length the extra width throughout sometimes you need it right at the top if you've got thicker thighs um and they don't even have to be thick, you know, you, you just need the extra room at the top, um, then you can, you know, you can extend that crotch point so that you're cutting it uh, slightly wider to give you a little bit extra room at the top of the leg, or you can, if you just need it at the lower leg, then you can cut it the way I did it the first time. So it just depends on your body and what you need to cut and 
what your goal is for the final piece. Patterns always look weird when you've cut them out because you're a 3D shape and no 3D shape looks right <laughs> when it's a 2D design. So uh, things always look kind of funny at first when you cut them off, especially if you do a lot of grading. This, especially as you'll see on here, those were like the Revolution leggings. This is uh, a Tessa sheath dress that I wanted to show just to show something that has both a bodice and goes out to a hip um, for the whole thing. So uh, for this time, we will cut, let's see, what are we going to cut? I think we're going to cut a small bust and we're going to grade out to a larger hip and waist. This is a pretty normal adjustment for me when I'm cutting because my bust, like I said, is smaller than my waist and my hips. So my patterns always look very, very odd. But like I said, uh, it's just because everything does when it's flat and then you get on your body and you're like, oh, okay, I see how this works. But I'm just trying to make my line as clean as I can here to connect the two and see, like, it looks like I didn't grade anything. But once you're wearing it and you're like, oh, yeah, that totally works. And like I said, this is an exaggerated example because it's not to scale. So these the small, medium, large is probably more like extra small, large, and like 2X or something like that, just so that the lines would be more clear on the screen. So this is just how I cut again on the fly. I don't do a lot of actual like full bust adjustments. I usually just cut the larger size. I know that's not proper. I'm not saying you should do it that way. I'm just saying that's how I do it. And I get pretty decent results. Now, if I were doing something more detailed, like see this, for this example, I was grading a large bust down to a small waist and hip. Uh, and you can see that that's pretty extreme. Again, this is not to scale. So, uh, but this, this is, you know, an extreme example of how sometimes you have to grade things when you are sewing a pattern. So um, this is, this example is for, if you want some extra length, like this is the Sunday romper. So what I'm going to do is give myself some extra length here uh, so that I have a little more floof over the top of the waist. Uh, Cause I like to have, I, because of the way my body is shaped, I don't tend to get very much floofing. I don't know what the technical term is supposed to be um, over the waistband. So I always have to add extra. Uh, this would also be used as a full belly adjustment. Uh, but for this part right here, I'm just adding length. And what I'm doing is I cut the bottom and now I'm starting to cut up the side and the front. But as I do it, every time I go up a little bit, I'm bumping up my projector. I'm hitting the up button on my pattern so that I get extra height. And that extra height goes throughout the whole top instead of just at the hemline. So um, that's kind of what I did for my daughter's top, the one that I added the lines at the bottom, the uh, back at the, in the back when we were still in Adobe. Now for this part here, this is how I do a lot of my tops. If I want a little extra length in the front for a full belly adjustment, I will just grade that extra length up to the side seam. And then that'll give me the extra length where I need it in the front without having to worry about it too much. And here are the finished products, my top and my daughter's tunic dress top thing in her tights. As you can see, everything came out fabulous. And she was really thrilled with her outfit. And I am thrilled with my top and my daughter actually already stole it. So I guess I'm okay with the team, but that's all I've got for you today. I hope that was helpful. Happy sewing.